Good to see everybody here tonight. We appreciate you being here. It's been a very hot day. Probably a lot of people stayed home tonight and just stayed in the air conditioner or maybe they're sitting in the river. I don't know if I'd be sitting in the river tonight. Mm -hmm. Certain places it would be too bad, but where that lightning was kind of hot, oh, uh, we wouldn't want to be near the river. But it's been good to see you tonight and to be in the house of the Lord. And, and uh, we're going to be continuing on our study of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Holy Spirit, of course, the third person of the Trinity, uh, much God, the God the Father, God the Son. Uh, but they're saying we as believers probably don't know as much about the Holy Spirit. Uh, certainly don't say as much about the Holy Spirit. I was thinking uh, a while ago, I was up in the uh, sound room and kind of going over some songs up there. And, uh, you know, and then right they say, we sing a lot of songs about God the Father. We sing a lot of songs about God the Son, right the Son. And we sing a few about the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, breathe on me. You know, and there are some songs out there about the Holy Spirit. But by and large, we, we don't know as, as much, or certainly not enough, about the Holy Spirit of God as we should. And, and that's, it, it's, it's both sad. And it's, both, and it's also counterproductive because if any people of God that uh, uh, that's ever lived or ever will live on the face of the earth uh, needs to know about the Holy Spirit just because the Holy Spirit deals with the believers during the church age that we're in different than any other. Uh, he, he never indwelt. Uh, any of the Old Testament believers, he came upon them, he used them, he uh, anointed them uh, for certain tasks. But this thing about indwelling, and that's what we're going to pick up next week because <coughs> Jesus said, if we were studying there in John chapter 14, he said, uh, I will send you a helper, a paraclete, I'll say, a comforter. And he will be with you and also will be in you. So he said that the current uh, status of the Holy Spirit working the lives of believers there in the upper room and the latter part of Jesus' earthly ministry was that he, the Holy Spirit was with them. And, and then he said soon he will be in you. Now uh, I think we can we can certainly agree that there is a vast difference between something dwelling with you and something dwelling in you. I know uh, uh, because of all my years of riding motorcycles that I have had a lot of bugs with me as I went down the road, that I had a few that were in me, uh, especially when I didn't keep my mouth shut. And, uh, and there's a vast difference. I'd rather have them with me than in me. But in regard to the Holy Spirit, Jesus was introduced in the fact that the Holy Spirit was going to begin a, a uh, his ministry was going to take, a, take on a new facet as far as believers are concerned. And that uh, is the fact that all church age saints of God. Those are people that have, that have been born again uh, after the establishment of the church there in Acts chapter 2 and until the end of the last church age saint is saved just before the rapture. All those saints, including us, if you are born again, you are indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God. And that should be just a fascinating, I mean, that should be, that should be one of those over-the-top statements. That should just uh, freak us out. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, if, if uh, you know, several years ago, uh, uh, President Trump uh, passed through this community, out of 4.1, with the, the streets were lined and everything. And, and you know, that was, uh, well, you you know, voted for it or not, or liking it or not, that's, that's irregardless. Uh, it's 
certainly when the president drives through your community. Uh, but what if he called you uh, and said, you know what? We've got to make arrangements for me to stay anywhere. Um, uh, you know, Jimmy, can I come over to your house and spend the night? We did. Hey, the, the, whole, the, the President of the United States coming to stay with me, to dwell with me. And that's what indwelling means. So uh, certainly we can see the see the difference in that. And uh, that's what we'll be talking about. But tonight, let's kind of let's kind of do a little prayer about the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. We, we certainly have any prayer requests. We can't pray for Miss Kay uh, after her post-surgery. Uh, we can't pray for others in our church who are sick. We can't pray for uh, Melissa's mother. She recovers from surgery. Uh, have others that are still recovering from things. And, uh, going through some things here, many that can't even remember Rick Dent and his family, his mother and his father. Uh, and, uh, remember uh, all those around us uh, who are going through that. Remember our nation, our nation, and those that are struggling with the coronavirus. And uh, let's pray that uh, God will send healing and uh, spiritual and physical. Yes, sir. Who's dad? Uh, they found the virus down there. Uh, oh, good. Okay, so. Remember uh, Chad's dad who uh, is in a nursing home and they, they did find a case there. That can be tough. And uh, so if you can't remember, remember them. Uh, I think the, the nursing homes around here have been real good about it. Uh, but it's hard. It's hard. Uh, my nephew, Peyton. Remember Peyton in the prayers. Uh, Carl's nephew who has uh, discovered uh, that he has leukemia uh, and he'll be back to Pray for the law. Pray for our church. That, uh, we'll get back to uh, hitting on all eight cylinders, maybe even a few more than that. And uh, I'm so looking forward to the time when we can fill these pews, have our choir back, and just sing and, and uh, you know have a good time in the Lord. We've been doing that, but it's just so good to think about those times. And I want to see us get back, and, and uh, I just want to have a good time in the Lord. All right, let's go to the Lord and prayer together. Uh, and uh, Chad, would you lead us in front of our son? Heavenly Father, Lord, just thank you for this day. Thank you for this morning, Lord. Just thank you for all you have for us, Lord. Just another opportunity to just come to your house, Lord. Just thank you for Jesus, Lord. Just came and died on the cross for our sins, Lord. Lord just, to, yes. just be with us tonight, Lord. Just to be with Rick as he brings, uh, teaches us tonight. We are looking at uh, our first batch of the scripture. We're going to kind of flip around a little bit. There's probably more information. I've probably got more information tonight from the cover tonight, and we'll just deal with that as we go. But we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit and how He operated and who He operated on and the things He did in the Old Testament. Uh, you know, we uh, suffice it to say the Holy Spirit of God has been around as long as God has because He is God. And, of course, the first time we see the uh, mention of the Holy Spirit in the Bible is in the very first chapter, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And uh, so the Holy Spirit was there moving. I think that's a key. Uh, the Spirit of God uh, is all about getting things done. The Spirit of God is about moving and changing and working and, and uh, you know, doing things. In, a, in the world and in the life of God's people and, and all people in general. The Spirit of God is uh, God's Holy Spirit. And uh, he, he is uh, very active, always has been very active, and uh, is active today in the lives of born-again believers. And he always will be active. There will never be a time that the Holy Spirit of God is not doing what he is supposed to do. 
And I'm going to kind of give you a little list. Uh, I, I'm going to try to type these up because uh, there's basically nine different things. And we're not, he said, oh, Rich, we're not going to talk about all that tonight. No, we're not. Uh, but we over the next couple of weeks, we'll kind of stick them in. But nine different things, if you want to call them things, ministries, act like activities. When I think about the Holy Spirit, I think about activity. Jesus told Nicodemus when he came out into the garden that night, he said, the Spirit bloweth where it listens. And he me, you see, uh, the Holy Spirit mentioned in the Bible, there's some activity involved in it. Uh, and uh, so these activities in the Old Testament, and of course in the New Testament as well. But we're going to start by reading this passage of Scripture in 1 Samuel chapter 10, Verses 6 through 10. 1 Samuel chapter 10. Now, you say, well, where's 1 Samuel? Uh, any of you familiar with your Bible, if you get familiar with your Bible, you know that 1 Samuel is right in front of Satan. Okay? <laughs> and uh, pretty simple, isn't it? It's just not hard. And uh, we're going to be looking at chapter 10, and we're going to begin reading verse 6. Now, the context of this, this is uh, the time of Samuel. Samuel was was a priest, kind of a priest slash prophet and ministering to the nation of Israel. Um, and they didn't have a king at this time. And, uh, God was working through Samuel. They had kind of a theocracy. Uh, Theo being God and ocracy being a form of government. So they had a form of government that basically was coming from God and Samuel was just serving as a mouthpiece. <coughs> so let's begin reading in verse 6. And right away we see that the Spirit of God is at the first Samuel chapter 10, verse 6. He says, And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. Now he's talking, uh, Samuel is talking to Saul here. The people were king, and, and, and uh, they chose out Saul, and, and God reluctantly says, All right, I'm going to give you that king, and, and God's trying to help this king. And the Spirit of the Lord shall come upon thee, that means Saul. Thou shalt prophesy with them and shall be turned into another man. I like that. I like that. The Spirit of God specializes in changing things. When he came on the scene uh, in, the, in the beginning before the heaven and earth were formed, it was void and, and dark and empty and nothing. Boy, did he change things. The Spirit of God moved. And before you know it, here we have a, a big, beautiful planet and, uh, that weighs six, six billion tons. That's a little bit more than I do. And, uh, and flying through the space, you know, 17,000 miles an hour and going on its axis at 1,700 miles an hour. And that's what I always say that. Because the Spirit of God specializes in changing things, especially when it comes to bringing about life. Remember we talked about the Holy Spirit and uh, his process and activity in the believer. When the believer comes to uh, have faith in Jesus Christ, immediately the Holy Spirit regenerates him. That means he injects him with life. Well, that's what he did in, uh, in, in the uh, beginning. And here he, he said, makes a promise to Saul. The prophet is saying, God's going to, the Spirit of the Lord is going to come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with him. And you should be turned into another mind. Boy, the Spirit of God can change your life if you'll let him. If you'll, if you will allow him to change your life. So let's move on verse 7. And let it be, when these signs are come unto thee, that thou do as a case to serve thee, for God is with thee. So he said, when these things are happening, go with thee. He said, let it be. And thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal. And behold, I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice sacrifices of peace offerings. Seven days shalt thou tarry till I come to thee and show thee what thou shalt do. So he said, a process of about a week, and we're going to, you know, we're going to have a special uh, event and circumstance to anoint you. So here in verse 9 he says, And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart. Wow. I don't know what he's talking about a physical heart to you. I think he's talking about like what Ezekiel said. Ezekiel made that 
prophecy after he saw the Spirit of the Lord, uh, you know, leave Israel because of their sin and rebellion. And he, he said, Ichabod, call it Ichabod, the, the Lord of the Lord has departed. But he said, you know what? In the latter days, Ezekiel said, I'm going to give you, my Spirit is going to give you a new heart. That's the very, you got to have a new heart. That's where it starts. The heart is the controller. It's the uh, computer. It's the uh, it's the, it's the uh, center of your will. It's the center of your emotions. It's the center of your intellect. And you know, God would be crazy to try to change your outside. A lot of people try to do that. They say, "Well, if I'm going to be right with God. I got to change all my outside habits and where I go and things." I do that. Nothing wrong with that. But where really change comes, and he said, he said, you're going to be another man. And he says, he says here, you start becoming another man, why, in verse 9, by getting another heart. Because if you get that heart, you get that new heart, the Holy Spirit comes and gets that new heart in you, then you're going to begin to think differently. You're going to begin to feel differently. You're going to begin to have different attitudes. Uh, your whole concept of a life is going to change, and then everything else is going to change as well. You're going to be that another man that he talked about. So it says here, God gave him another heart, and all those signs came to pass. That day. all those things that that uh, Samuel had prophesied was going to happen to uh, Saul after the Spirit came upon him. He says uh, they began to happen. He began to he didn't begin to prophesy like the prophets. I mean this. This Saul guy was, that was not he. Saul was, uh, uh, you know, he was uh, a champion of a lot of things. He was a, a champion warrior. He was head high above everybody else. He was the people's choice. Uh, but he never had been acquired with him. Okay, let's put it that way. And, uh, and yet, God, when God chose him, and the people chose him, and God had ordained it, said, all right, I'm going to put my spirit. God's going to get work on you now. And uh, you're going to be different. If you, if you turn into another man or another woman because of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, that's different. Isn't it? You're going to be a different person. And uh, these things that, uh, that Samuel had prophesied about Saul and then people standing around, <coughs> it must have been kind of like back when, when God saved me and called me for it. Because I had a friend all the time. I, um, God, I got a motorcycle with him. We got into a lot of trouble together. And, uh, and uh, I'm not proud of that. I, I, I don't do that. But, but uh, he said something. He, uh, you know, he heard it. Uh, I saw him. I, I'd gone back to my hometown and started a church. And I went out to visit him. Went out to visit a lot of my friends. And I invited him to come to church. He said, you know, I heard you got saved. And you changed, you know. You quit doing the things you're doing, now you're doing different things. And he said this, he said, now I thought to myself, you got to say you didn't say to anybody. <laughs> and I thought he had this compliment. And but he was he was recognizing the change. And, and no doubt probably in the life of Saul, some of his friends would be around and say, what? Saul? Well, I mean, he maybe wasn't a bad guy, but he, he, had, he, he was, Saul was the flesh man, okay? He, Saul was all about the flesh. He was all about what could be accomplished in the flesh. You know, the, the champion guy. He would have been a, today, he would have been a champion athlete, a champion in, in, the, in the army, so to speak. And he would have been a, you know, he would have just been all about all this out here. No one would have considered him as somebody who would uh, be used to God or have a sense about the things that he needed to do for God. But you see, when the Holy Spirit come, either comes on a man, this is what happened in Saul's in, in sense. He wasn't permanently in well, like Jesus said was going to happen to the believers in John 14. But he said, when this Spirit comes on you, Saul, you will be a different person. Folks, that if there's a if there's a verse in the Bible that really really exemplifies and uh, let me tell you, let me tell you this word. Extrapolates. It extrapolates. Spell it that way. Uh, extrapolates. Uh, you don't need to do a clinical search to make it into the <laughs> But anyway, 
extrapolates the, the, the sense of what the Spirit is all about is that. That he can take this man and change it into this man. That's what the Holy Spirit's ministry is. So he said there in verse 10, and when they came to the, to the hill, we hold a company of prophets met him. Now listen to this. And the Spirit of God came upon him, and he prophesied among them.
has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. Well, that sounds like that creation account there in Genesis, doesn't it? You say, listen, God made me. I know that the Spirit of God made me. So the Spirit of God creates and sustains life. That's the first thing we saw that in the idea of regeneration, that we now are not physical life uh, in the New Testament, or, or not physical life in the sense. One of the things that the Spirit of God regenerates, the spiritual nature of the human being, your dead spirit that died because of sin. He regenerates us, born again, new birth, birth from above. That's what he's talking about. And we will talk about that more. We've already talked about some of it. Number two, the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament spoke God's words. The Holy Spirit was in charge of getting the word of God out. Now, why was it important that they, that he, that they have a spokesman back then? Because it didn't have any. It came right from God's tongue. It came right from God's mouth. God was in here Jesus when he said, I speak those things and he speaks. The Holy Spirit did the same thing in the Old Testament. When God spoke, he would give it to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit would come down and put it in the heart and the mind of a man that I call a prophet. A prophet was a representative of God the Mighty. You see, you had priests in the Old Testament, and they were representatives of man and God. The priest would go into the temple, or in the tabernacle, and make the offering, and then he would make intercession for the people. He said, oh, Lord, forgive these people. They're, they're blockheads, they're boneheads, they rebel, they, they're disobedient, but forgive them. You're a gracious, loving, and merciful God. Please forgive them. That's what the priest did. Now, God, when God wanted to say something to the people on the other, on the other direction, he would give it to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit would put it in the heart of the prophet. And the problem would get up there and say, let's say it the Lord. Here's what God has to say about the situation. So the Holy Spirit spoke God's word out there, 59 21. He said, my spirit that is upon me. And he told them what they needed. Say the same in 23 2. David, and this is David speaking, he said, the spirit of the Lord spoke through him. And in, he said, he even puts the words in my tongue. David said, I, I, you know, I'm so, I'm so, uh, this thing is so finite how God works. He said, the Spirit of God speaks to me and he even puts the, he puts the word right on my tongue. And that's, that's how I speak to you. So the Holy Spirit spoke God's word in the Old Testament. That's how people, that's how men and women, uh, that's how people back then heard what God thought and what God wanted and what uh, God wanted to say to them. So, so the Holy Spirit spoke God's word. Number three, the Spirit promoted holiness. You say, well, what in the world does that mean? You know what a promoter is? A promoter is an automobile race or a motorcycle race or a horse race or a uh, you know, boxing match. You always have promoters. And basically, there are guys are out there saying, all right, we're going to have this thing. You need to come to see it. We need to advertise it. And you need to, man, it's a, uh, this is a good thing. You need to come and uh, promote it. Just builds it up. Always talking about it. Always saying, this is the way it ought to be. The Holy Spirit in the Old Testament still does now. <coughs> when I say the Holy Spirit does something in the Old Testament, that's doesn't mean he didn't do it in the New Testament. He may do it in a different way. Let me tell you, get this. Write this down. Tattoo it on your elbow or something. The Spirit, the nature of the Spirit of God, let me go back and put this a different way. The methodology or the way that the Holy Spirit deals with man may change. But the nature of Him and His message and His ministry never changes. He said, well, he did things different in the Old Testament. They did absolutely right. But I guarantee it was for the same reason to accomplish the same goal. So when we say the Spirit of God promoted holiness, does he not promote holiness? No, absolutely. But the Spirit of God was constantly 
God's the glory of people saying, listen, you need to live for God. You need to live holy. You need to forsake your sin. You need to, you need not be rebellious to God. You need to get away from that idolatry. He was constantly exposing their unholiness. And saying, this holiness is the way to live. That's what he's promoting. You know, when someone gets on the TV and says, all right, here's a new hair shampoo, which, you know, I'll change the channel when it happens. I have no, I ain't got a dog in that body. <laughs> but, you know, something else, you know, it's interesting. If you want to see this kind of stuff, get up and watch TV early in the morning. One channel will be selling something that will make you gain weight. One channel will be selling something to make you lose weight. And one will be changing your hair. One will be making your hair grow. One will be, one will be a fancy way for you know, to get your hair off. And it, it's just something like that. They're promoting that. They're saying, this is good thing. Well, God's Spirit promotes holiness unto the Lord. That little phrase happens many, many times. God's desire has always been for his created creatures to be holiness unto the Lord. Holiness. We need to, the Holy Spirit is always saying to talk like our, our dear president does. I, I love one of the things he does. He's so simple, it's profane. Something will happen or somebody will say something, he'll say, that's that. He didn't give you 15 minutes of, you know, words and speeches and quotations about what somebody said. He said, that's bad. Or he said, that's good. You know what the Holy Spirit did? Uh, sin, when sin and rebellion and disobedience are out and all the other things that play us here on this word, he says, that's bad. But then when we live for God, serve Him, obey Him, turn back to Him, he said, that's good. He's promoting a holy lifestyle. He is promoting a lifestyle that is absent of disobedience, rebellion, and ungodliness. Isaiah 63, verse 7 to 10. Read that when you get home. Isaiah 63, 7 to 10. You folks that are listening at home, you can already read it because you're home now. Isaiah 63, 7 to 10. Isaiah said, that rebellion and disobedience vexes the Holy Spirit. You know what vexes means? Kind of stabs you. The Holy Spirit don't like your rebellion, my rebellion. But that's why he's constantly promoting holiness. David realized how, how bad his sin was with Bathsheba and his deceit in regards to Bathsheba's son of Uriah. Uh, Uriah. And he understood that that hurt his relationship with the Holy Spirit. When in Psalm 51, verse 11, he said, Restore unto me the joy of my salvation, and take not thy spirit away from me. You see, that was something very, very different in the Old Testament. The Holy Spirit could go away from you. Like I said, Jesus said he's going to come and dwell in you forever, but that ain't happened yet. So up to that point, you could lose the Holy Spirit. In other words, he wouldn't be on you for the service. It doesn't mean you lost your salvation. It simply means that he, you know, he said, oh man, that's sin. I can stand that. And he'd go away. Now, when the Holy Spirit, Jesus said when he comes later on, at the day of Pentecost, he's going to end with us, and he'll be there forever. You will never, since the day you got saved. Romans 8, verse 9 says, If you do not have the Spirit of God, you're not of His. But if you didn't have the Spirit of God, you are. The day you got saved, the Holy Spirit lived into your heart and life, and you will never be rid of Him. Now, that doesn't mean about 500 times a day He might can get rid of you. Because <laughs> sin still vexes Him. I think about the Holy Spirit. That, you know, every part of it, he, he's got senses like we do. And my sin must, first of all, burn his nose. Oh, Rick, that smell of oh, That rebellion, that disobedience. 
must just turn his stomach. Oh, mercy. You're making me sick with that unfaithfulness and ungodliness and all the things. That's what he's talking about. We need the Holy Spirit constantly in our lives promoting holiness. What, uh, what time is it? Anybody got a watch? Seven oh three. I've got one, but it's seven. Let me go back. Uh, there's about six more of them, and, and probably next week we'll finish those up. But, um, there's, we're going to see some more things. But I want to go back to where we started out with Saul there. So I want to, you saw there in, uh, you saw there in the life of Saul a key phrase. He said in verse 6 of chapter 10 of 1 Samuel, he said, And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you. And that, that really is a distinguishing, there is really is a distinguishing difference between coming upon you and willing you. I think we've illustrated that. Mm -hmm. You know, it'd be different for the president to drive by and be in your community, drive right by your house. But then to come live with you, that'd be different. You know, I may like it.
said, Samuel said unto Jesse, verse 11, Are here all thy children? He said, Are they all here? This all your sons? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. How would you like to be that son? Oh, by the way, yeah, I got a Sorry about that. I got a name. Ain't much. Evidently, he didn't think he was did he? said, Ain't much. There remained if yet the youngest, and Samuel said, Sin and fetch him, for he will not sit down till he comes. He said, I'm not going to sit down, I'm, I'm still here. And he sent, verse 12, and brought him in, now he was ready, and with all a beautiful countenance and good little looks too, so he was a handsome young man. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Just as soon as you walk in, he said, That's the one. That's the one I want right there. Then Samuel took the horn of the oil and anointed him in the midst of the brethren. Now listen. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. You see, the Spirit of God in the Old Testament came upon certain individuals for certain reasons and specific uh, duties, if you will. Whether it was to fight giants or fight other kingdoms. Or, but here he said, this, this David, that's, that's the one I want. And he said, aren't you anointing? That means you're anointing the uh, put some oil, they you anointing with oil. That was always a symbol. Anointing was always a symbol of God's choosing. And so when he anointed him, he said, that's the one I want. And said that, and, and there's that key phrase, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. God says, that's the one I want. And the Spirit went over and said, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to make him something special. I'm going to make him a different person. I'm going to make him another man just like I made Saul. So they rose up and went to reign of the believers 14. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Now we've got a little bit of information there, didn't we? You can lose the Spirit in the Old Testament. The Spirit can leave you. Saul lost the Spirit because he had disobeyed God on so many occasions. And God says, all right, if you're not going to be what I need you to be, I'll go over here and here we David. If David does that, I'll go over here to somebody else. Saul lost the spirit. Now, whether or not that meant he lost his salvation, we're really not sure. To be honest with you, I'm really not sure. Back then, the spirit, the Holy Spirit, could get on anybody, even a lost person. Sometimes the spirit worked through, in the Old Testament, worked through pagans. God would move a pagan king to attack Israel. To try to get Israel back to where they needed to be spiritually. So that it was a kind of indiscriminate and not necessarily connected with having that relationship, that right relationship with God. A little bit of difference in the way the Holy Spirit worked in the Old Testament. All right, we're going to stop right there tonight. Uh, we'll pick this up next week. This is going to take a couple of weeks because. We still got to look at a man by the name of Bezalel. How many of you know Bezalel? How many of you got children in Bezalel? <laughs> Not one of your more favorite albums. But Bezalel was a man that the Holy Spirit came upon him. Maybe, Roger, you'll appreciate what he did. You may have to go home and read about it. Exodus 31. You think, well, the Holy Spirit, he comes on somebody to preach and to prophesy and to sing and to teach. Listen, the Holy Spirit came upon people in the Old Testament to do a lot of things. And a lot of things weren't the things that we necessarily think of. Gideon, 70 elders under Moses. Neat thing about that, we're going to find out that God said, I'm going to take part of your. Moses had so much spirit on him, he said, I'm going to take part of your. Yours and put it on me. <laughs> Share it. Share it. Gideon. Here's one you'll probably remember and recognize. We'll talk next week about Samson. He was the guy that you just never knew from one day to the next if he had the spirit of the Prophets, 
Moses, the Holy Spirit, came upon me in the Old Testament to use them for God's glory. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for joining us at home. We're talking about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And it's the same Holy Spirit that He dwells us as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ now. And he wants to do the same thing in our lives that he did in the Old Testament. To help us be used to bring glory and honor to the Father. Promote holiness in our lives. Promote the word of God in our lives. A lot of things he's got. He, he wants to do a lot of things to change us and make us into that another man. Like, like he did with Saul when he did with David. Thank you for joining us tonight. Let's be dismissed with the word. For our Father in heaven, thank you for this day. Thank you for your many blessings. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We believe you're real, you're there, you're alive, you're a personage, you're a triune part of, you're the part of the Trinity, you're as much God as God the Father, God the Son, and so we pray unto you. And thank you for your ministry in our lives. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, God bless you. Good to see you all.